Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what a faithful God he is. I'm sure you had a great week last week. And God has uh, brought us again to a new week today. I want to acknowledge your, I, I want to appreciate you for joining us again this morning. We want to have a good time and then pray together, share God's word together and share fellowship. I know we are missing one another, but I believe that where you are, God, will, God is uh, faithfully preserving and protecting you. So this morning, before we start, I would like us to stand and let's pray. Wherever you are in your house, uh, please, your brothers, the children, everybody, let's join. Let's stand on our feet and let us pray. It, it's, um, um, we are going to pray. I want you to just open your mouth and thank God again for today. Thank him for his goodness over your lives. Thank him for his faithfulness over our lives for this number of weeks. Let's just open our mouth and bless him, praise him, exalt him, praise him. Just worship him, give him thanks for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his loving kindness, for his tender mercies. There is no one like you. You are great God. You are the almighty God. You are the ancient of this. You are the lily of the valley. You are the bright and morning star. Thank you for your faithfulness over our lives. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for overshadowing us. Thank you for keeping us in the center of your will. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for my sisters. Thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your keeping power. Thank you, Father, for your provision. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your preservation. We say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, almighty God. Father, we praise you again today. Today we worship you, we honor you, we exalt you. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for all the good things you've done for us and in us. We worship you. We worship you. We bless you. No God like you. No King like you. No Savior like you. No Redeemer like you. No Helper like you. No Deliverer like you. Father, we give you thanks even today. We worship you. Blessed be your name. Thank you for your Spirit. Thank you for God the Holy Spirit goes that dwells on the inside of us. Thank you for your living word. Thank you, Father, for all that you have been doing. Lord, we say, blessed be your name, O God. Thank you for our city. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for men and women, Lord, that you have preserved and delivered from the wicked works of the wicked one. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, even for those who are afflicted by the enemy in the hospitals, we give you praise for your deliverances, for your intervention on their behalf. We worship you. We bless you. We praise you. We extol you. We exalt you again even today. Be thou exalted. Be lifted high above all heavens. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want us to also pray. Just take a few minutes again and pray for nations. In recent times or in recent days, God has given me this um, concept, how I pray. I take the alphabets, not just for this morning, even while you are praying on your own, you can ad adapt that as well. It will help you. I use the alphabets. All the countries that start with A, all the countries that start with B, all the countries that start with C, all the countries that I can remember that start with D, all the countries that start with um, uh, D, E, and F, G, and so on and so forth till, till the last term. Um, an alphabet which is uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and so on. So I use those alphabets to remember nations, to say, Lord, let your grace reach out to these nations. Let your mercy reach out to these nations. Let the gospel prosper across these nations. Just open your mouth now. Any nation that you can remember, begin to lift that nation before the throne of grace, that the mercy of God, the grace of God will invade those nations. That grace of God, there will be an outpouring 
outpouring of the Spirit of God upon the nation of Australia, upon the nation of Austria. Lord, we lift up, oh God, the nation of Australia. Austria, before your throne of grace, let the gospel prosper in those nations. Let the goodness of God prosper in those nations. Let the grace of God be poured upon those nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we lift up, oh God, every nation, oh God, they will bring up Bermuda. Lord, we bring, oh God, Bene Republic. We bring them before your throne of grace. Lord, that your mercy will reach out to them. Let your grace be outpoured out. Lord, to Belgium, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are asking that the works of the wicked will not prosper in those nations. We bring China before you. We bring Cuba before you. We bring Colombia before you. We cover these nations with the blood of Jesus. We ask for your mercy that the grace of God will be poured upon these nations. Lord, that your your goodness and mercy will be extended to these nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God, that Congo will receive the gospel of Christ, that the gospel will prosper in Congo in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Lord, we lift our eyes, voice, O oh God, and we bring before you Denmark in the name of Jesus, that the glory of God be revealed over Denmark in the mighty name of Jesus, that the wickedness of the wicked will not prosper in the name of Jesus over Denmark. Mark. We declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, that Ethiopia will receive the gospel of Christ, that Eritrea will receive the gospel of Christ, that Egypt will receive the gospel of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, every wickedness of the wicked, you shall not prosper upon those nations. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that your glory, Father, the grace of God will be revealed, that goodness of God will be revealed upon these nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bring before you in the name of Jesus, the nation of Fiji. Lord, let your mercy, O God, the grace of God. Father, in this season, will prosper in that nation for salvation, for deliverance. In the name of Jesus, the nation of France will receive the gospel of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, all the agenda of the wicked one shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ, O God. We bring Germany before you. We bring Ghana before you. We bring, oh God, this nation before your throne of grace, that the glory of God will be revealed for salvation. Let your grace prosper. Let salvation take place. Let deliverance, oh God, and reach out to God to these nations in the name of Jesus. Let this season bring an open door for the prosperity, for the, Father, for the propagation of the gospel of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that the works of the wicked shall not prevail, that the powers of darkness will not prosper, in Guinea-Bissau, in the name of Jesus, that the wickedness of the wicked will not prosper. Let the gospel of Christ, O oh God, Father, invade the nation of Guinea, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Lord, we bring Hungary before your throne of grace. Lord, that your glory will cover Hungary. Let your grace reach out to Hungary, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Lord, we bring Honduras before you. Lord, that your glory will be revealed over that nation. That the power of the goodness of God will be seen upon that nation. Lord, that souls will be saved. That the gospel will prosper. Lord, there will be divine intervention in the name of Jesus Christ, O God. Father, we thank you. Father, concerning India, we bring the grace of God upon the nation of India. We bring the grace of God upon the nation of Iraq. We bring the, gospel, the grace of God upon the nation of Iran. We bring the gospel of God upon the nation of Ireland. Lord, we bring the gospel of God, the grace of God upon the nation of Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Lord, that in this season, there will be a breakout, O oh God, of revival. Let there be a breakout, O oh God, of revival. Let men and women be delivered. Let the paths of darkness be shattered. Let the agenda of the wicked be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, that Argentina will experience the grace of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father, we praise you. Father, we worship you. Father, we ask, oh God, that your glory will cover the earth, even as the water covered the sea. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Thank you, blessed Father. We worship and praise you. In in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Thank you, our Father. We stop here today. 
And then on your own, you can keep praying. Just use the alphabets. Any nation that falls into those um, alphabets, you just intercede. We, the world needs your prayers this time. We all need to stand in the place of prayer and intercede for our, our, our world. Because satanic agenda, whatever we are seeing today is satanic agenda. And I believe that as we keep interceding as a church, the God of heaven will intervene and bring about the peace the stability, the freedom, the liberty that we had, we have been enjoying all these years. Praise the Lord. Please take your seats and God bless you. Thank you again for joining, for linking up with us. I believe that um, God's word will be a blessing to you. I want you to know that no matter what is happening, God is always on the uh, God is always faithful. Just trust Him. Just depend on the faithfulness of that you have known about Him all these years. If you have been a believer, especially those of us who are a part of this local assembly, all that you have learned over the years, it is now time for you to put them into practice. You stand fast, engage your faith, oppose the works of the wicked, resist the enemy steadfastly in the faith, and the Bible says He will flee from you. Just hold on to the truth of God's word. No matter what the devil does, he's already defeated. We are more than conquerors. Praise Jesus. All right then. We want to look at our part two of the end intended by the Lord. Now we added, please, I added intended by the Lord. That's the series we started last Sunday. The end intended by the Lord. Our scriptural reading then uh, last week was James chapter 5 from verse 7 to 11. And I told us that I was going to emphasize verse 11. And so that is, what, that is still going to be the case. The Bible tells us in James chapter 5 from verse 7 to 11. Once again, I remind you because you are at home. So that's why I am I'm reminding you again. Always have your pen, your paper, and your Bible so that you can make don't say, well, later I will do that. Don't allow anything to distract you. This is very, it's a precious moment that we are having together. Let, it, let the word of God be a blessing to your life, to your spirit man. Just see yourself as if you are in church service. Amen? Just see yourself as if you are in, in the congregation here. So just make sure that you are not distracted, you are not focused. The word of God is where we receive strength for our inner man. And that is why we must let the rema, because as we are speaking now, there must be a, a phrase or a verse that the Holy Ghost will use to quicken you or to instruct you. And that word can become a rema to you. A particular phrase or a particular word or a particular verse will be a, a, a rema to you. So that word now may be the one that God has sent to you specifically and don't let it pass you by. Don't let, don't allow the enemy distract you by one thing or the other. Praise the Lord. All right, so we are looking at James chapter 5 from verse 7 through 11. Like we read last week, we repeat ourselves again, we read. It says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. That is the expectation of every child of God, that the Lord is coming back for his church. For his people. So he says, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Verse 8. Next verse, please. You also be patient. Establish your hearts. We spoke about this last week. Establish your hearts. Very important. That means let your heart be steadfast, committed to the Lord, committed to the truth of God's word. Let your heart be established, established, unmovable. It's not wavering. It's not doubting. It's not, there is no unbelief. Today I believe, tomorrow I don't believe. No, no matter the situation or circumstances, establish your hearts. The Bible says we should keep our hearts with all diligence for, from there, from, from our hearts come the issues of life. So establish, let's establish our hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Next verse, please. He said, do not grumble against one another. This lock in, 
makes us to stay with one another. So there should be harmony, especially husband and wives, father to children, children to father, and uh, so mother with children, mother with husband, whatever it is. The Bible said, do not grumble against one another. Brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, a judge is standing at the door. Verse 10. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord and as an example of suffering and patience. Verse 11, finally. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job. And sin, the end intended by the Lord. That is where I took my title from. And you have seen the end intended by the Lord. That the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Father, bless your word that we have read in Jesus' name. So last week we spoke on we should count them blessed who endure. I'm recapping now that we should count them blessed who endure to the end. It is those that finished well that are called the blessed, that are blessed, not those who fall on the wayside. Somebody like Judas is carried, we cannot refer to him as being blessed because he didn't finish well. Somebody else like Demas, we cannot say that he is blessed because he did not finish well. So the Bible says we count them blessed who endure to the end. In fact, I want to add this to what we studied or what we are looking at. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 12 while on this point of we count them blessed. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse um, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Therefore we, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us run with endurance, painstaking race. Yes, your nerves will be paining you while running, for particularly marathon, while running for a while. All your legs will be paining you. Your tissues will be feeling strain of the, uh, the, of the race that you are involved in. But the Bible says in such situation, you should endure, press on. Don't give in or don't give up. Don't stop. So the Bible now tells us that we should endure and keep running. And keep running. And that is what the scripture is telling us here. They, they, we should count them blessed who endure. When the season of endurance comes, you should be able to stand up and be counted. So, the next verse please. Verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 12. I'll just, that is where I'm, I actually I want to emphasize. The Bible now says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, while I was meditating this verse, please leave that verse too for me on the screen. While I was meditating this verse yesterday, this particular verse too, I want the Holy Ghost open my understanding and I want to point it out to us. Look at what the Bible says there. Now, what gave Jesus joy? He says here, he said, who for the joy that was set before him. Okay, what is the joy that was set before him? I asked myself. Okay, I said maybe he will have a name that is above every name. Or he will have, uh, uh, that he will be eventually after the, his resurrection, he will go and sit at the right hand of God the Father. Is that what gave Jesus joy? And I answered, those things, he had them before coming down. He was sitting with the Father in heaven. He was already glorified. What is it that was giving Jesus joy? What was the joy of Jesus? Is it the name that is above every other name? No. Look at what the Bible tells us here. 
He says, he says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. That means something motivated him to endure the cross. The joy that was set before him motivated him to enjoy, to endure the cross. And you yourself and myself, we must have something motivating us so that we can be able to endure in the seasons of pressure. Now, what is it? From my study, I see. Look at the answer. It's not the great, not the, the name that he's given to him. It's not the position, not the fame. Because he had those before coming. The reason why the joy that was said before us, the joy that was said before Jesus is in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Please project for us. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Look at what the Bible tells us there. I'm going to read it. Okay, let me read it from New King James Version. Then I'll read it from modern translations like Today Living Bible and NIV. He said, for it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. In bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect, through sufferings. Verse 11. I'll read it before I read it from another translation. It says, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. That means they came from the same source. We are the same parents with Jesus and us. Wow. I will show you from an, a modern translation. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus is not ashamed to call me his brother. He is not ashamed to call you his brother. Look, because of what? After paying the price, after enduring the cross, what excited Jesus, the joy that Jesus had was that one day he will have you as his brother. That was the excitement of Jesus. Not name, not fame, but he will have you. All the believers today that believe in Christ, they will, because these brothers, will, these, these people will believe in what he did, the joy of seeing you, bringing many sons to glory, that was the joy of Jesus Christ. As a result of that, he endured the cross, seeing the joy that was set before him. Praise the Lord. Now, let me read it from Living Translation. He, listen to this. The Living or NLT, New Living Translation. Look at what the Bible says. He said, so now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. Wow. I pray you, I wish you have the same scriptures, the, the same translation with you. NLT, NLT. Look at what he says. I read it again. He says, so now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Jesus is not ashamed. Why? Because that was what the joy that was As a result of that, he endured the cross. The joy that was said before him was that after you go to the cross, men and women that believe in you, you they will become your brothers. And that excited Jesus. So he endured the cross. Friends, you must have a motivation for what is, and for what is motivating you for you to endure the trying seasons. The challenging seasons. You remember what we are looking at? We count them blessed who endure. We count them blessed who endure. When you endure, Jesus here, he says he was not ashamed to call us his brethren. Why? Because of the joy that was set before him, he was going to bring many sons to glory, including you and I. Praise God. I read it again from the Living Bible. He says, we who have been made holy by Jesus now have the same father he has. 
Look at it. I read it again. He who have been made holy by Jesus now have the same father he has. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers. Jesus is not ashamed. And that is the reason why he endured the cross. So that you and I will bring him joy. He endured the cross. He endured the cross. Having endured the cross, you, he will bring you to your expected end. The end intended by the Lord. God will not stop his work in our lives on the, on, on the way. No. He will bring it to perfection. Now, let me read it finally. NIV. NIV. It says, but, but the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. <laughs> wow. God, Jesus, makes us holy. And because of that, he says, we are the same family. So, so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. So, when we endure, to endure, What enabled Jesus to endure was because of you. For the joy that was set before him. The joy that was set before him. He saw beyond the cross. He saw beyond the pain of the cross. He saw beyond the insults of men. Why? Because he was seeing Anthony. He was seeing you eventually being the outcome of your sufferings. He endured the cross. And that is the reason why you and I must also do what? Be endure. We must stand on our ground and stand for our faith. No matter the circumstances that the enemy is lying around us. Praise God. I want you to add that to point one. The, we count them blessed who endure. I want you to be among those who endure. You must endure to the very end. You must not give up. You must not surrender. You must not yield to the lives of the wicked. The Bible says some of the prophets of old, they also endured. They endured. And last Sunday, I pointed one of them, which is Jeremiah. Now, and other ones that I will just mention in passing are Elijah. How to deal with the threats of Ahab and Jezebel. Elijah. He had to deal with the threats of Ahab and Jezebel. Hosea endured a heartbreaking marriage. Hosea. Hosea. God told him, marry her. The wife was cheating and doing all manner of things. And yet, he endured it because God gave him instructions. Another person, John the Baptist, which you know, he was in prison for speaking against evil. And he endured the prison until he sent one of his disciples. Go and ask him, is he the Messiah that we are expecting to come? You know, the season of endurance is not always palatable. But the Bible encourages you and I to do what? To endure. There should be endurance through that season. So that uh, we, will call, we will be called blessed at the end of it all. Here we see John the Baptist who claimed, who pointed men and women to Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the whole world. He pointed, now when he went through his season of pain, the season of trial, the season of difficulty, he was questioning his own testimony. But at the end of the day, he was in the prison. Jesus no, did not go and deliver him. Eventually, he was beheaded. We all know the story. But he, he, you need to, I need to, we must endure the seasons of challenges. Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, Bible scholars tell us, he was son asunder. He was son. He was son, son. They saw him in two. Prophet Isaiah. That great prophet who wrote the book of Isaiah, that was, the book of Isaiah was um, uh, uh, titled with his name. He was caught asunder. He was splitted asunder. 
yet he endured. And that is the reason why blessed are those. We count those who endure as surrender. You must not give in. You must not give up on the way. You must blessed are they that endure. We count them blessed who endure. And we will endure and we shall come out of this situation to the glory of our God. Amen. Number two, last Sunday we said that we saw the perseverance of Job. It's in our text, verse 11. My subheadings are taken from verse 11. He said, the perseverance of Job, we saw it. And we saw how Job persevered. And eventually the Lord saw him through. And I want to add these verses to that point too again. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 3 and 4. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Perseverance. Perse pressing on in the face of opposition. You press on. You know, I was watching a boxing fight. One of probably last week. They were boxing. And this guy, he was very good against his opponent. He had amassed so many points. He has already had points. Round one, he, he had more points. Round two, round three, round four, round five, round six, and so on. He was already ahead on points. So eventually, because of that, he started doing, he was showing off in the ring. He was just, he became complacent. He became careless. He was now, show, after all, I have already won this guy. He kept hitting this guy. He got all the points, actually. Everybody watching that fight, will, you would see that he, would, he will eventually win the fight. But at the last round, about few seconds, not minutes, few seconds for the fight to end, this guy became careless and was showboating. And then was just doing that suddenly from nowhere. This guy, the, the, the guy that he should have defeated, summoned enough strength and gave him one punch that knocked him out. He lost the fight. Because of what? Complacency. He took his opponent for granted. He was so booting. After all, because he was already ahead, actually in, on points, he, he, he would have won that fight. But he became careless and he was knocked off. Brethren, you must persevere to the end. As Job, he persevered to the end. He did not behave. Job did not behave like the wife. The wife, when it, during the good times, she was enjoying everything. In this challenge, in this season of adversity, she all she urged the husband, curse God and die. Now, look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. It will take a mature heart, a mature believer, a believer that trusts God's word to, to, to glory in tribulations. To glory in tribulations. For you to rejoice in the midst of tribulation, it takes a believer that is mature in the knowledge of God's word. You count all things joy. That in the midst of tribulations, the Bible says, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces for us what? Perseverance perseverance, we keep pressing in, that in spite of all that is happening against us, in spite of all the troubles around us, we keep pressing on. That's what the scripture is saying. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. It now says, and perseverance what? Character. And character hope. Look at it. Perseverance will produce character. I always say, character does not change. A is always A. B is always B. C is always C. We learned it in our kindergarten classes. 
They taught us A, B, C, D. Those, they are called character because B remains B. Whatever, wherever it is used. A, B, C. So character. Character. Now you can be able to stand your ground. Not up, not wavering. Not inconsistent. Look at what someone said. He said, when character is right, our conduct will be right. And character is built from or is, is built from convictions, drawn from what we believe. Character is what, when character is right, our conduct will be right. And character is built from conviction, drawn from what we believe. Character. What you believe, you stay there, you stand there. Come what may, you don't change. Because of challenges, you don't compromise. Because of difficulties, you don't surrender your faith. Because you cannot come and fellowship with other brethren does not mean you should not maintain your relationship with the Lord. You must learn to pray on your own. You must study the scriptures on your own. You must hold on to your convictions that you have had before this crisis. You must hold on and defend them by your lifestyle. Character is never erected in, on a neglected conscience. Character is made by many acts, but it can be lost by one act. Character is never erected on a neglected conscience. You do nothing. You built nothing into your life. In fact, this crisis, this crisis will prove so many whether they have been following religion or they have been following a relationship. Whether they had a relationship with God or they were just doing religious activity. Now, you don't need anybody. You are, in fact, you don't even expect anybody to visit you. You are your, all on your own. Pastor didn't visit me. It's no more an excuse. You either a, you are a Christian or not. You either know your God indeed or not. Nobody to visit you. In fact, you don't even expect anybody to visit you because you don't know what the person is coming with. Friends, it is your faith that you have built or the convictions that you have held that should manifest in this season in your life. Stand your ground. Be, declare the word of God. Stay with God. Stand, spend time in the place of prayer. The Bible tells us that perseverance will build character. Will build character, steadfastness. Will build character. You will prove that in despite all that happened, God is faithful to uphold you. Character, standing your ground, despite the challenges, the problems. Those problems will soon pass away. These two shall pass in Jesus' name. Another scripture, Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8 and verse 25. Romans chapter 8 verse 21. Uh, 25, excuse me. Romans chapter 8 and verse 25. It says, it says, But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. If we hope for what we do not see, we do have not seen Jesus yet. We are expecting to be raptured. We are expecting to spend eternity with the Lord in glory. We are waiting for that. And because of that, we are waiting eagerly. Despite what is going on, our expectation of the return of the Lord will not be faulted. We will not be distracted. No lie of the enemy will change that conviction in our hearts. He says, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly, we eagerly wait for it with what? With perseverance. We don't change course. We don't change direction. We keep persevering, expecting, waiting for the return of the Lord, our master. Praise God. Friends, you need to, I need to, 
persevere. As Job persevered, and eventually she had it, he had a testimony with the Almighty. Now let's go to point three. The, the end intended by the Lord. Point three. The end intended by the Lord. All this is found in James chapter 5 verse 11. All my subheadings are found in James chapter 5 verse 11. So we see the end intended by the Lord. So we read. Let's read our text. Then I will go... Um, we read, then we can now read other verses. Look at what the scripture says there in verse 11. James chapter 5 verse 11. It says, indeed, we count them blessed who endure. Those who endure to the very end. We count them blessed. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, which we just dealt with. Last week we talked about Job, uh, Job as well. How the wife... Despite what the wife said, he was not distracted, he was not discouraged, he pressed on. Now, we are seeing, let's continue, and seeing the, sorry, you have heard of the perseverance of Job, and seen the end intended by the Lord, that is my, our point three, the end intended by the Lord. Now, what is it that the Lord intended for Job? Was it a setup by God so that Job will fail? No. We saw the end result eventually. We saw the outcome of the trials of Job. We saw that after all said and done, all the challenges that he went through, we saw the intended end of the Lord. In this crisis, we shall see the intended end of the Lord. We shall not see the intended end that Satan wants to. No, his expectations will be disappointed. At the end of it all, it shall be the intended end of the Lord that will prevail. Especially as it concerns his church upon the face of the earth. See what the Bible tells us? In Job chapter, sorry. In Job chapter 13 verse 15. This is the kind of mindset you must hold. This is the kind of attitude you must maintain. This is the kind of con uh, perception you should hold. This should be your persuasion as well. The, the end intended by the Lord. Everything that God does, there is an intention. He sent Jesus to come and die for he had an intention. He had a purpose. He had a reason for that, for, for, for sending his son. That is the intended end. All of us, whatever you do, you have an expectation. You have an expect. You there is an there is an outcome that you want. Here we are saying the end intended by the Lord. And whatever the Lord intended for us must always be a good one. Praise God. In Job chapter 13, verse 15, the Bible says, Though he slay me, wonderful. Though he slay me, even though God will never slay us. Even though God was not the one, he cannot slay Job. God, does not, God is not a killer. He says, there is a time that he will be that people may will be killed. The time of judgment, not now. He said, "Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him." That should be your convictions. That should be your persuasion. That should be where you stand. That though he slay me, he will not even slay you. Yet will I trust him. I will depend on him. I will continually believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. No matter what is happening around me. Even so, I will defend my own ways. That means you don't compromise. You don't take, you don't do what every other person is doing. No, you trust the Lord. You depend on his wisdom, on his judgment. Praise God. Job said, even though my enemy, you think he will slay, even if he is slaying me, 
I'm not changing my convictions. No matter what they say, I will remain a believer. I am a Christian. I am born of God. I belong to God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No matter the challenges, I always like to prove the enemy wrong, even under certain pressures of life. So that the testimony, when it comes, it will bring glory to God. Now, another scripture, Job 42, we see the outcome. How Job finished. How Job ended. The intended end of Job. He lost the, 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 his wealth. He, loved his, he lost his business. He lost his children. He lost everything. And his body, he lost his health. He lost his wealth. He's lost his, he lost his children. And in the face of all these calamities, Job never threw in the towel. Now, look at the outcome. The intended end by the Lord. The intended end by the Lord. Look at what the Bible tells us. Job 42, verse 10. Job 42, verse 10. I'll just point out a few things there, and then we'll move on. He says, and the Lord, L-O-R-D, all capital letters. And the Lord restored Job's losses. Not just loss, losses. When he prayed for his friends. When he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, no matter what the enemy may steal from our lives in this crisis, God will restore a hundredfold. God will restore two times whatever it is. Look at what the Bible says. Let me show you something there, and which you must practice and I must practice. Look at what the Bible says. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. When he prayed for his friends, you must not hold any ought against any man. You must not hold any ought against any woman. You must not. Don't live like a natural man. Oh, he did this to me, I will do it, I will revenge. Paying evil for evil. No, Job forgot about his challenges. Job, rather than focus on his problems, he focused and took out time to pray for his enemies. He actually behaved as Jesus. On the cross, Jesus prayed for his enemies. Stephen, uh, uh, Dickens, Stephen, he prayed for his enemies. It takes a believer full of the Holy Ghost to pray. We are hearing so many stories. We are hearing so many stories. This crisis or this virus may have come from a lab or may have been orchestrated by certain men and women, but it doesn't matter who orchestrated it. Our responsibility is to pray for humanity. We pray God is the one that will bring about the implementation or the execution of judgment. Pray! Oh, like, you know, like we keep saying in this assembly, we don't pray for our enemies to die in this church. We are not known for that. It, in fact, if you dead pray that from the pulpit, we will, we will embarrass you. Uh, my enemy died. My enemy, no, no, no. The Bible didn't teach us that. The Bible said, pray for them that despitefully use you. Pray for them that persecute you. That's what the Bible says. Jesus prayed for those executing him. Apostle, um, Dickin, Stephen prayed for those that were stoning him to death. Say, Father, don't hold this sin against them. But thank God, out of those multi mobs that, event, that were trying, that lynched him, Saul, Apostle Paul, came out from that. Friends, Job prayed for his friends. The friends that mocked him. The friends that said, look at you. It is because of your sin that all these calamities have befallen you. Job grew. He showed maturity. He showed that he is mature than them. He prayed for them. And the Bible says God answered. Everything that Job lost, God gave him double. If you read down, the, the daughters they had were the most beautiful in that nation. Everything that Job lost, there was total double restoration. 
my friends, the end intended by the Lord will always be better than what the devil thought he has done. Praise Jesus. In Psalm 21 verse 11, let's read. Psalm 21 and verse 11. It says, Psalm 21 verse 11, please be fast. Psalm 21 and verse 11. The Bible says, For the intended evil against you, they devise a plot which they are not able to perform. This crisis, the agenda, whoever is behind it, it will not turn out for their expect to, to fulfill their expectation. The Bible says, for the intended evil against you, the intended evil against you, they devise a plot which they are not, eventually they are not able to perform it. The church cannot, I repeat, the church cannot be stopped by any power. Very soon, we shall hear testimonies, mysterious hand of God that will work against those that will stand against the church. Not just our local church, the church of Jesus Christ across the nations of the earth. In fact, it cost God his life to purchase the church. And any man or woman or institution that will try to come against the church, I tell you, it will be grounded like powder. The Bible says here, they intended evil against you, but God will restrain them that they will not be able to perform the evil. Now, another portion. We know the story of, um, of but let's read this once before we get there. In Genesis 27, in Genesis 27, from verse 41 to 46, we saw, let's see again. Genesis 27, from verse 41 to 46. The Bible says, so Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. That is his intention. Keep going. And, he, and the words of Esau her older son were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you by intending to kill you. See, no matter their intention, intention is not implementation. You may have intention, but the execution may not be carried out. God is the one that ultimately determines the outcome of the thoughts of men and women. He intended to kill Jacob. Now, let's continue first. He said, and the words, say, now therefore my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Keep going, we are reading to verse 46. And stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away. Verse 45, next verse. Until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also of you, of you both in one day? 46, finally. And Rebekah sent or said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of heat. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of heat like these, who are the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? However, the truth here is, or the, 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 the story there is that Esau, we know what, Esau lost his birthright to Jacob. Jacob cheated him or deceived him, even though it is not really deceived because there was a negotiation prior to this incident. You know, give you, I'll give you my porridge, you give me your birthright. Eventually, it's just that Jacob used a device and ungodly means to get the birthright by deceiving their father. So, Esau intended in his heart that as soon as his, their father is dead, he will now murder 
Jacob, his brother, because of how he cheated him of his birthright. But eventually, the intentions of his heart were revealed, and Rebecca intervened and sent Jacob away. So what are we saying? That no matter the devices of Satan the devil, no matter the devilish intentions of Satan the devil, I tell you by the name that is above every name, that Satan's intention will always be thwarted. The intentions, the intentions of Satan will always be frustrated. Even in this crisis, at the end of it all, it is God and his church that will, bring, will take all the glory. Here we see, he intended, but eventually he was not able to perform his intentions. God is always smarter. When men and women are planning in their hearts, God is already seeing it and he's making a way of escape for you and I. Praise the Lord. Another incident, which you know, in Genesis again, chapter 50, verse 20 and 21, Jake, Joseph, and his brothers. If, a, a story that if you are conversant with the scriptures, you should be familiar with. Joseph and his brothers. Look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20 and 21. The Bible says, but as for you, Joseph now was addressing his brothers when he has disclosed himself to them and they were now ashamed before him. And Job and Joseph now said, and said, as for you, but as for you, you meant evil against me. Wonderful. Oh Lord, let that be the testimony of your children. That you will stand before your detractors. You will stand before your enemies. You will stand before the works of the wicked. That you intended evil against me. But wow, look at me now standing tall. That you are a, your plans could not be executed. So Job, uh, Joseph now said, but as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good. God, the ultimate arbiter, the ultimate intervener. When God has not commanded it, it shall not come to pass. See, and you meant it for good, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day. This is not what you planned. This is what not what you thought will eventually turn uh, will will eventually be the outcome. But God has turned it for it to be the way it is now. So He says to this day to save many people alive. The next verse, please. That was in verse 21 now. He says, Now therefore, do not be afraid. You, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. I can see them walking away. Or, I mean, they were having self-pity over themselves. They are guilty. Guilt is written all over their face. Even though Joseph spoke comforting words to them, they were just feeling so uncomfortable. Why? Because their intentions have been disappointed. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. That shall be our testimony in the name of Jesus. That it shall only end intended by the Lord will be what will prevail in our lives. No matter who conspired, no matter the gang up, no matter the satanic setups, it will turn around for our good in the name of Jesus. Now, in James chapter 1 verse 12, I'm, some, I'm, I'm, I'm about summarizing now. James 1 and verse 12. Look at what the Bible says. James chapter 1 and verse 12. He said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Friends, out of it all, the end intended by the Lord is that you will receive your crown. Blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation. We are in a tempting season now. It trials here and there. But after all, all these situations and circumstances, we shall endure to the end. God will approve us as he approved Job. And when God approves you, he will not leave you at the level that you are. 
We saw Job, double promotion. We saw Joseph, the brothers, whether they liked it or not, they bowed to Joseph. Men's intention, society's intention, devilish intention that are not in the agenda of God for your life shall not come to pass. Coronavirus will not destroy you. It is not in the agenda of God for your life. Therefore, you shall live and not die. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Okay, let me see what I can finish it. Point four. The example of compassion and mercies of the Lord in Scripture. Remember, the end intended by the Lord, and he concluded, he said the compassion and mercies of the Lord. It is because of the compassion and mercies of the Lord that Satan's agenda, wicked men's plans and purposes do not come to pass in our lives. They are always cut short. In, they are always cut short. God prevails against the works of the wicked one. Because of his compassion, because of his mercies, what the enemy intended in this season is much more than what we are seeing. But we, we have the prayer you prayed, the church of Jesus Christ is praying across the nations of the earth, will continue to restrain the enemy, that his plans will not come to pass. Look at it. The example in the scriptures I know you have, you, you, I believe even this intention alone have taken your heart to this portion of the scriptures. Look at it in Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 19, but we are not reading all of it. When I read a couple of the verses, you become familiar with the story, then we stop. Look at what the Bible says, Acts 12 from verse 1. It says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. To harass some from the church. Herod stretched forth his hand to harass some from the church. Okay? Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Verse 2, keep going. He said, then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Next verse. And because he saw that he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unliving bread. Verse 4. And when he had ordered, sorry, and so, so when he had arrested him, he put him in prison, that is Peter, and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to, keep, to bring him before the people after Passover, intending, mark that words, intending to bring him. That is his intention. Because he had that intention does not mean it will, he will be able to carry it out. Now, verse 5. And Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Constant prayer. That is why we are never tired in praying in this season. We pray against these works of the wicked one. We pray against the powers of darkness that is trying to stop the church from fulfilling its purpose on the face of the earth. The Bible says, and please go back to that verse, verse 5. The Bible, verse 5, please. Go back to verse 5. Say, Peter was therefore kept in prison. Look at the contrast. But constant prayer. But constant, the opposite. The, he, Peter was kept in the prison and the church started engaging in prayer. You must engage in prayer now. What we are seeing, we don't like it. We can change it in the place of prayer. We keep praying until a change happens. 
We must not give in to Satan the devil. The church is an institution that Jesus is Christ, Jesus the himself set up. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says, when you come together, that means the Bible, the Jesus warned the church to be together. Even Jesus, when he was on the face of the earth, he had a fellowship with his disciples. Don't allow the enemy lie to you or some negative voices talking. You can do church in your house. It's not true. A church is supposed to be gathering. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. The church is meant to gather and fellowship. So every agenda of Satan to stop the church from gathering, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. Not just this church. Across the nations of the earth. How do you witness now? How do you witness except through online? How do you disciple them? How do you conduct baptism? How do you make altar call? How do you follow them up? How do you build up their faith? Talking like this? Is anyone amongst you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. They will anoint him with oil. The book of James. Friends, the Bible says, but Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant. That is why you, we must engage in the place of prayer. Like I told you when we started, I want to suggest it to you. In case you don't remember, I use the alphabet A, B, C, D. Every nation sees China, you know, Colombia, Cuba. All those nations that start with C, they want the Holy Ghost to remind me, I pray for them. If I come to letter B, D, I say Denmark, whatever, which other nation again is D, and so on and so forth. D, E, Egypt, Egypt, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and so on and so forth. We inter intercede in the place of prayer. We must pray until God gives us victory. He gave us victory here. He said, he gave them victory here. He said, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Verse 6, I'll soon stop. Verse 6. And when Herod was about, lo lo kota ne zakata ne mako marakata yabato no zakata ne kaya rakato no zokoto no minakata When the enemy is about to execute his agenda, we declare it, he shall proceed no further. He said, and when Herod was about to bring him out, Satan is always late. Satan was always late. The help of God, the deliverance of God, of God will come at the nick of time for you. Said, and when Herod was about to, his expectation was disappointed. When he was about to, we have caught them. We have gotten them. Listen, any man or woman, boy or girl, any deep state across the nations of the earth that is behind the wickedness that we are seeing today, they shall pay dearly for it. And when Herod was about to, that will be my testimony. I don't know for you. It shall be your testimony. When they are about to, when they fail, there is no way out again. That means we have caught him. Listen, God will disappoint their expectations. He did it in Job's life. He did it in Joseph's life. He will do it in our life. And when he was about to bring him out, that that night, not any other night, that night at the nick of time, at the very moment God showed up, God showed up, Jesus showed up, heaven showed up. And the Bible says, and that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains. If you, if you like, go and bring 100 chains. Go and bring all the soldiers to secure Peter. When God arises, no power can stop God. When God arises, the Bible says, let all his enemies be scattered. Look at it there. And the Bible says, two soldiers and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Verse 7. Please go, 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 go. Let me just quickly finish. It says, 
Now behold, an angel of the Lord, an angel, an angel, just say an angel, not two angels, one angel, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, arise, quickly, arise, and his chains fell off his hands. Next verse. Then the angel said to him, Give yourself, wear your dress, wear your sandals, wear everything, and tie your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. Let me see the power that will stop you. Let me see the opposition. Let me see who can stop us. Let us go. And as he was going, the doors were opening on, its, on, on their own accord. There are some VIPs coming. Please clear. You door, clear. Inanimate objects, clear. They were responding to the power that is above every other power. And the doors were opening. VIP treatment Peter enjoyed from the prison. Why? Because the church Church prayed. An angel, an angel, one angel. No wonder, Satan, we know your end. One angel is coming from heaven to bound you and cast you to the bottomless pit. One angel. All this, your gara gara, will come to an end. We know your end already. You cannot prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Peter thought it was, it was too good for him to believe. He said it was a dream. Peter, it was too good. We shall see this end, the end of this coronavirus. We shall see the end hereof and we glorify our God. I cannot tell you that day how I will tell Satan. I will just mock him. Oh, again and again and again, the church is prevailing. Friends, the end intended by the Lord. I love that. I love, you may, he may have done his worst, but we shall laugh last. We saw it here. And then he went out and followed him. And he did not know what was done by the angel was real, but thought it was, he was uh, seeing a vision. Uh, and we know the story. He now went to where they were praying. And when he knocked, they could not even believe their eyes. God is more than enough. This circumstance, this situation, will wake up one of these days and coronavirus will be history. Coronavirus will be history. The wickedness of the wicked will totally come to an end. In the name of Jesus. What am I saying, brethren? I am saying to you and I that the end intended of the Lord is always going to bring glory to his name. I repeat myself. One glorious morning we shall appear before the Lord. We'll be raptured, taken out of this world. We are losing nothing. Brethren, if you are a believer, if you believe in Jesus, except you are not in Christ, if you are in Christ, listen, listen, one of these days you will appear before the Lord. He will take you out of this world. Satan will not have the last word over your life. He will not. Whatever he does, he is a loser. He will remain a loser. He will continue to lose until he ends up in the bottomless pit. Friends, what a great privilege for you to be a, a child of God. The end intended by the Lord will prevail over your life, will prevail over your family, will prevail over everyone, your children, your husband, your wife. We shall lose no one in the name of Jesus. Friends, the end intended by the Lord, not the end intended by our enemy, nor intended by Herod, the agent of the devil. It shall not come to pass in our lives. Only the end intended by the Lord. I can, I'm rejoicing because other aspects of my life that Satan was thinking that there is no way out, God has made a way for me. I won't tell you yet. Very soon I will let you know. God has made a way. He thought, oh, he is stranded. No way out for him. He has come to his uh, wit's end. Listen, in my wit's end, God makes a way. And that is why he is God. 
He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. Therefore, <laughs> my enemies don't laugh yet. My foes don't laugh yet. No, no, no. Satan, don't laugh against the church yet. Our, the captain of our salvation defeated you perpetually. And there is nothing you can do about that. Friends, the end intended by the Lord is what you must begin to trust God. I close with this. Please, bear with me. I know I've taken some few minutes, but you are at home, so rejoice, relax. Let me just read these two verses. I mean, this one verse, and then we pray. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 35. I'm excited. I'm excited in my spirit because the expectations of Herod were disappointed. They, he was confounded. Because of time, I didn't read it to the end. At the end, the Herod himself was eaten up alive by worms. Maggots ate him up alive. Listen, don't touch the church. As long as we are still on the earth, I tell you, as Satan's agenda will never prosper. As long as the church, Jesus bride, those men and women he purchased with his blood, as long as we are here, Satan has a limit to what he can do. Don't give him an undue honor or respect. Uh -uh. Don't give him. He doesn't deserve it. No, he may have thought, listen, they thought he, 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 whatever he has done now has, has awakened us from sleep. He has, he has awakened us to our responsibilities. And therefore, you must not give him any inch in your home, in your life, in your family. You have authority to restrain him. You have authority to resist him. You have authority to oppose him. And I tell you, when you decree, God of heaven will confirm. Look at Job, Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 34. We will finish here. After this, we close. See, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon. He called him twice. That means it shows the certainty of what the enemy intended. Say, Simon, Simon, he failed here. He failed in Acts chapter 12, where we read. He failed here. He failed in Acts chapter 12. He says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan, the deceiver, has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. In the spirit realm, Jesus saw into the spirit realm that Satan is orchestrating the downfall of Peter. The destruction of Peter. Jesus saw into that realm and was disclosing it to Peter that the enemy has desired to sift you as wheat. You know, when he sifts you, he removes your quality, the substance that you are made of. And then he will leave you empty and the wind can blow you off. Say, Peter, that is what Satan have desired for you. Now, what is his response? Let's continue. Verse 32. But I have prayed for you. For Jesus, if Jesus prays for you, God must answer. And presently, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for his church. If God answered the prayer of Peter, of Jesus on behalf of Peter, he is answering Jesus' prayer now on behalf of his church upon the face of the earth. He says here, he said, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Verse um, 33, he says, go on, go on. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to the prison and to death. Please let me pause here. Listen, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Peter thought he was fighting against flesh and blood. No, he was fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places or in high places, four levels or four layers of Satan's hierarchy. 
And Jesus, Peter was now responding in the arm of the flesh and said, Lord, I am ready to go with you. Listen, it is not about boasting in the arm of the flesh. It is about your confidence in the God of the scriptures. Know him. And you know, after Peter said this, he still denied Jesus. If Jesus had not prayed for Peter, imagine what the outcome of his life and destiny would have been. Peter was trusting in the armor. This thing is not about in the arm of the flesh. It is about you engaging the power of the Holy Ghost that indwells you and I. That is why I encourage you, pray in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost fill you on a day-to-day -day basis so that the wives of the wicked will not prosper in your life. Friends, what are we saying? The Lord, the Master is praying for us and we cannot fail. You are a winner. You are an overcomer. And I declare that the intentions of the Lord will come to pass in your life. The intentions of the enemy will not come to pass in your life. The intention, the end intended by the Lord, that is what will prevail in your life. Any other agenda from the pit of hell, I declare them null and void. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, maybe you are there hearing or listening to me. If you are not yet born again, if you have not given your, to, to be born again means you have not given your heart to Jesus. Or Jesus, you have not asked Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior. You are, in fact, you are taking a, a big risk. Because the rapture can happen any moment from now. Anything can happen. And that means your security is when you are in Christ Jesus. Jesus is our present day ark that you run into and you are saved just like Noah did in his generation. So you need to ask Jesus to give you, give your life to Jesus. Give your whole life to Jesus. Say, be the Lord of my life and my Savior so that you can be sure of his divine preservation and protection. I pray with you. If you are there and you have not given your heart to Jesus, this is the moment for you to do that. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross on my behalf. Today, I give you my life. Be the Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth that you died and, were, and was buried and you were raised up for my justification. Thank you, my Lord. In Jesus' name. I confess with my mouth that I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you. Lord, thank you because your word says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Any man, woman, boy or girl, wherever they are, listening to the sound of my voice, as many who have called upon you now, let the power of salvation come upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you because you have translated them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Thank you because the works of the wicked shall not prevail over their lives anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for having heard us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, for every person that listening to your word today, let you are in end, O oh God, the end you have intended for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, of your, for your children. Father, let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let satanic agenda be disappointed. Let the devices of the wicked be frustrated. Let that which you have ordained for each one of us be what will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Every herald spirit, every conspiracy, every wickedness of the wicked against anyone, Lord God, I declare them null and void in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Only your intention for our lives will stand and will surely come to pass. Thank you for having heard us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say a bigger amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, the wickedness of the wicked shall not find you in Jesus' name. Before we share the grace, you, maybe on your screen you'll be seeing our church details. You can pay your offering. You can pay your tithes. You can give your offering. Don't just take your money and say, well, no church now. No, it's this season 
you will prove to God that you love his kingdom. You will prove to him, come what may, God is number one. As long as you are wherever you are, you sow. As the word of God is being a, bl being bl a blessing to you, you also support. We will still worship in this building. We will, ship, we will still gather in this place. And therefore, we should be able to fulfill our obligations. And at the end of it all, you are transferring your wealth into the kingdom you are expecting to spend eternity. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will not allow you to believe the lies of Satan the devil. But you keep honoring God with your substances. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you in return as he has always been doing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Until I come your way again on Wednesday, I want you to stay strong and focused and be consistent and be persuaded in your spirit that the eternal intention of the Almighty will stand upon your life. God bless you and bye. But you're gonna be alright I know you will